Estuaries are river valleys that are flooded with seawater. They usually form when the sea level is going up and that the higher sea level pushes the seawater back up into an area that used to be influenced and dominated by the river. And so if we think about it in terms of the flow speed, we have the, the flow of a river confined to the channel and it's very fast. And when it reaches the, the uh, seawater, the area here, the flow speed slows down a great deal and you get deposition of the sediment in this area here. So right at the river mouth edge is where you have a lot of uh, the uh, deposition. So there are several things that can happen depending on the rate of uh, sea level rise. If it's going up, this, the sediment that's deposited here can just get buried and the estuary will keep uh, filling up the river. At some point, there'll be a balance between how much sediment's coming in from the river and how much deposition there is, and that will define the, the boundaries of the estuary. So we still have the main deposition here. Um, the area for the estuary, the, the, the furthest upriver point here is the furthest that you get the seawater intruding. And then going down towards the ocean, there, there are a couple different ways it can be defined if there's a straight uh, coastline, the edge of the estuary would be the extension of that coastline, or if the coast is quite variable, it could be sort of the um, end of uh, the freshwater. So the oceans have tides in most areas, and so the there's very commonly uh, when the tide's coming in, a flux of seawater into the estuary. And the river flow can vary through time as well, usually that's seasonally. Um, but then you, so you often get fresh water on average that's flowing to the ocean. So if we make a, a, a cross section through this area, So if we look at the at this this cross section, we have fresh water coming in from the river, and fresh water is less dense than seawater because it doesn't have the salt in it that the ocean has. That lens of fresh water will often float on top of the seawater. And the balance between where the fresh and the salty water are within the estuary here will depend on the strength of the tide and the strength of the river flow. These two bodies of water often mix. And that produces what we call brackish water, which is an intermediate salinity uh, between the fresh water and the salty water. Organisms that live in estuaries have to be able to withstand those big changes in salinity that are associated with changes in, in this boundary and the mixing. And so a lot of times uh, estuaries are ecologically very interesting places with organisms that are, um, have adapted to this uh, really dramatic change in water chemistry. So we can look at the sub-environments uh, within estuaries and a lot of times there'll be an area that is more open to flow. So this might have the stronger flow coming out. It usually doesn't end quite that, quite that abruptly. And then a lot of times if uh, you have a, a, a nice uh, warm climate and you, you can get a lot of marsh
and the marsh will vary being more fresh water further closer to the river and the source of fresh water and being more of a saltwater marsh uh, farther to the south. This would be an estuary that has uh, very little waves or tides in the ocean. If there's a significant amount of tidal flow that's transporting sediment within the estuary, the tides flowing in and out through this area where we're getting deposition creates bars and islands that have a geometry a lot like those in tidally influenced deltas. So for example, you can get these um, islands that are uh, elongate parallel um, uh, to the, the tidal flow direction. So the ocean processes can also have waves and waves create beaches. So almost always what happens if you have an estuary in a wave uh, dominated zone is that you create a beach here and there's almost always longshore drift because the waves don't come in exactly with the shoreline. So I'm going to say our longshore drift is um, down and in this image. And so what happens is you end up building a set of barrier islands and they can have multiple openings or or maybe only one depending on the details of the size of the waves versus the flow of the river and then you really create a lagoon uh, behind this area. And again, you have, you have deposition in the mouth of the river, so sometimes you might even see a little bit of a, a delta geometry right where the river is flowing into, into the lagoon. The waves usually don't propagate very far inland in, in an estuary because the, uh, it's a flooded river valley, so the uh, the depth of the water is really quite low and most of the wave energy from the ocean waves is dissipated uh, along more closer to the average shoreline. And so usually the, the estuary in the estuary proper there, there's not a big influence of the ocean waves, although wind can produce uh, small waves uh, within those environments. Thanks for watching.